screenplay video one. Um, so, uh, instantaneously while you were away, all the models got painted. <laughs> Which is pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, we have our cards, um, and we're going to discuss what we can do. I don't think we want to activate them, because there's two of us. We can milk the activations quite a bit longer. But I'm going to go into shadows for sure. I mean, it's a no-brainer. All right. And then, uh, what do you got? I got interrupts and... Uh, I have some interrupts and other spells I can save, but I do have Blink, so I could technically... <laughs> could you get there? ...get in position and maybe get to her. Fantastic. If we can kill one of those guys, I could stand next to it and teleport onto her. Can you get up there? Because I probably can help you out. I can't get up there this churn, so I'm just going to move to, and I'll probably end up saving that card. I got some tough decisions to make. Well, I've only got one decision, which is save Blink. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm already in shadow, so I'm going to move cautiously. I'm going to ease this direction. Behind the the tank, the, the, the apprentice, the maniac. Yeah. Uh, and, and I'm gonna also be done. And you're thinking, well, wait, you didn't do anything. Well, sometimes the best options are not to do something. I, I, I mean, we we could have. I, I could have attacked. I'll just say that now. Uh, but it doesn't do me any good to attack if I'm not in position to do more things, or the apprentice isn't ready to do other things. Uh, and I could have put an ongoing spell out, but it would have generated an AP, and I didn't really need it, so I just discarded it. And we don't want to activate the darkness, so we're we're being cautious and moving into position. And this is something that happens with two players. With two players, uh, you might get loitering penalties more often, uh, like we're getting ready to do. Yep. Um, but it's not that big of a deal because if there were five people and six treasures, you're looking at one treasure piece perhaps. But if there's two people and four treasures, you're looking at two treasures a piece. So you can actually incur two loitering penalties and still have more treasure technically per person uh, than you would with a five player. So we're going to highlight the darkness board now. Um, Kenny, uh, he kept blank and I'm going to keep shadows touch. I had Dark Reaver and Hustle and Now You See Me, so I had lots of options depending on what I think I want to do. So if I thought I was going to maybe go into a suicide run, I'd keep Hustle, or if I wanted to take care of those grubbers, I'd keep Dark Reaver. But in this case, I'm going to keep Shadow's Touch. I keep my one card, and then we build up to our hand size. I'm not going to look at them yet because we're going to talk about this. I did not spend an AP. And I didn't either. So we incurred a loitering penalty, so we'll remove a treasure. Also, we are in threat range now. Uh, the threat range of the grubbers is four. is four, and the threat range of the crawlers is three. So in both cases, we're in threat range, so we're going to... They are going to add AP in the darkness cycle, so they go one to two. Um, and so... Basically, we removed a, uh, a treasure because of our loitering penalty, and we increased the darkness one AP per monster type active. And the other thing that will happen is, is we also will lower the time to rescue Lucy by one. That's right. So I changed the angle of the camera a bit because, uh, one, it helps mark time for you guys uh, a new round, and also um, the glare from that straight shot was pretty bad. So, <laughs> <laughs> so here we are. Um, We've both seen our new cards and we're both giggling because we can do all kinds of stuff. And so now we have to decide who's going to go and who's going to do what. Uh, because I have Shadow's Touch as I kept it. I have Shadow's Reach and I have Unseen Ally. So basically I could destroy that lair and stay in Shadows if I could get a target on it. So... Since you what know can, you can do what that. What can you do? Well, I could generate four AP pretty much instantly, but... <laughs> let me, let, that would be one, two, three You're AP. The, right. I could cast Blood of Guy, which is two AP, kill those three guys in front of us, and then you could maybe get your attacks off. 
I don't know if you'd be able to do them all with the three AP, but well, the if it's part of a combo, you could blow up. That's them. right. So that's the best I can do. I wouldn't be able to put any of my ongoings out, but we'd have the layer destroyed. All right, well, let's do that then. All right. Well, I'm not going to move, and I will play Blood of Gaia. And that's how many AP? It's two. So we're up to four now. Yep. And since it's a, a spell, I'll be using my lucky cup to give me some an extra D10 and my base D10 from my hero. And I didn't move, so I get a plus one D10 from the not moving bonus. All right, so Blood of Gaia hits monsters in a 1-3 cone. I'm going to target here and hit these three. Uh, there's only one target number, which is the crawlers, and that is a four. Um, I will, in addition, get one fate die from my hero. Um, and Blood of Guy doesn't add anything else. So if I hit them, I only need one success to hit all three because they're one monster type. And I got a six, which is all I need. I did not match my fate symbol, which is arcane for the lucky cup. Um, so I'm going to kill all three guys and generate a treasure for us. Where do you want to put it? You can put it here or here. <sighs> I think we're going to put it here. All right. And then killing three guys, I will raise my threat three. And I will wait to see what my brigand ally is going to do. Your brigand ally is going to... Destroy it. Spend one <laughs> AP in Shadow's Reach. Alright. Shadow's Reach allows me to appear next to a target within three squares. Bing. Oh, I could just put myself on the treasure. I know, oh, you might as well. Oh, I better do that. <laughs> That's what a brigand would do. And uh, because it's part of a combo... Uh, I'm not going to end up really, uh, exiting shadows quite yet, so I'm going to attack um, and do my two damage, possibly. I need my two d10 and my fate die. I get my d10 from my brigand, my butter sharpened butter knife, uh, and my fate die from my brigand. I get no, I get two extra fate dice because I'm in shadows, and that's from my one with the dart. And your not moving bonus is. My not moving bonus is minus two target number, so basically I can't. Right, you needed so, a one to succeed, and you, and you did yeah, far I mean, more than that. I, uh, that was my result. I did not get um, a guile, so I did my two damage to the lair. Oh yeah. Uh, and because it's part of a combo, um, I'm going to do my massive attack, which is two AP. So after this card's over, they will activate. I'll do three damage. Once again, the target number is minus two. Um, success, and I got a guile symbol. The guile symbol reduces my threat one. By the way, I should have increased my threat two um, when I did my shadows reach, and another three when I did my shadows touch. But because I got my my guile symbol. Uh, I reduce it by one, so I'm sitting at threat four. The lair has been destroyed in one turn. Uh, treasure appears where the lair is, and it's where basically I want to put it, so I'll put it right here. So my apprentice friend could uh, possibly grab it. So on the second turn, because we didn't cause any AP, we were able to do that much damage and destroy the lair uh, before I had a chance to spawn. Uh, we'll activate the darkness and flip over darkness card. So we're highlighting the darkness board again. You'll notice that uh, we removed the marker that was tracking the layer damage and so it's been removed. We can put it back on of course when it's time. Um, when we increased the darkness, uh, Kenny's apprentice had taken it up to four. I did shadows reach and then shadows touch uh, because I spent one more, it goes from six back to zero, and then another one for the extra one I spent. So we're sitting on one, and we flip the card over. Um, if there are less than four minions, spawn a captain. There are not. Um, there is no threat penalty because no, neither one of us is up high enough to incur a threat penalty. Uh, so then the minions activate, and normally there would be a spawn, but since the lair's done, we don't have a spawn. Uh, so, uh, activation, minions, captains, mini boss, then boss. So, the creatures will go 
now. <laughs> so the darkness is going to activate, and I'm the one with the highest threat. Uh, and depending on proximity, instinct goes before intellect. So the crawlers will go first. Luckily, well, not luckily for me, but uh, right. there are three ranged, so we can move them now. Their range is three. three. So they'll all. No, this one was one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. They will stay there. This melee guy will move into position. Mm -hmm. And that's all the crawlers. Now we move to the grubbers. Uh, and they're intelligent, so they're going to make room, and their highest priority is threat, and I have the highest threat, so I'm pretty sure they're all going to surround me. Yeah, so they have a movement of three, so we'll go one, two for that guy, right? One, two, one, two, three. And this last grubber actually can't reach the brigand now. So he's going to go to the next closest target, which is me. I have a threat three, not that it matters, and he will move up two to me. There you go. So, that's the darkness moving. The apprentice will receive one attack, and I will receive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attacks. So we'll do the apprentice's attack first. Um, the grubber rolls 1d10. Um, if you look on the card, uh, this is the attack. You will roll 1d10. It attacks one target one time, and it needs a seven target number to hit. Um, I'll roll... Six. Yeah. Six misses. The apprentice is fine. Now I'm going to receive the um, crawler attacks before the grubber attacks because we just decided to do the apprentice first because it was just a single attack. All right, so I've got 4d10 ready for the crawlers. I do have an interrupt that I can play if I need to use it. All right, good. All right, so they needed a seven to hit as well. Yeah! And I have three hits. So I will dodge one of those. All right. With so my I'll... now you see me, one incoming attack is dodged. So he hit me twice. That means I'm going to take two damage. One, two, and he needs to roll two fate dice to see yep. if I'm poisoned. Yep, if I get a darkness result, the brigand is poisoned. And I got one. So I am poisoned. Now what poison does is it's a, it's a damage over time. Uh, we actually talk about damage over time, but we don't talk about poison in the book. Um, it's going to give me one damage in the refresh phase. Um, in the status effect step, I believe that's step four. Um, and I will take one damage until it gets healed. I can be healed by a potion, or it can be healed by the acolyte, or it can be healed by Blood the brigand. Yeah. And so I need to cycle my deck pretty quickly if I hope to survive. That was just the three ranged. No, that was all that was four. All four. So now I get the three grubber attacks. Hey, I'm going to knock you off that treasure. He doesn't deserve to be on it. I know. All right, here we go. Let's hope for misses, for the brigand to live. Okay, I rolled one success. I'll reroll this one because it was cocked. There you go. So I took three damage that turn. Not not too bad, not, not great, but the lair's dead, and that's okay. We can deal with that. Now that darkness cycle interrupted our hero cycle and so we continue with our hero cycle my entire hero board is full um, sh I have my shadows reach, shadows touch, now you see me and I had a shadow card out I'm not in shadows anymore so I'm done and I'm not going to reduce any threat Kenny on the other hand can probably do more yeah so I'm going to start getting some ongoings out so I can help clear these bad guys out of our way to get the treasure and maybe save Lucy in the yeah, we gotta save Lucy. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna play Ore of the Elements, which is a 1 AP card. It's gonna allow me to absorb the first point of damage done to me per hero cycle. And then I'm going to also play Research, which is another reaction, and 1 AP. And it'll allow all of us, uh, well, anyone within range 3 of me, to reroll 1 D10 per hero cycle. And that is all I'm going to do. So, our hero cycle's done. Um, First thing we do, so we've entered, entered the card refresh phase. The first thing we do is reduce threat based off of open spaces. I have no open spaces, my threat will not reduce. I have one, so it'll reduce to two threat. Then we clear our cards, put it in the discard, keep one card. Get our, to our hand size. 
And then we add darkness to the darkness board based off of how many active types there are. In this case, there are still two active monster types, and they're definitely active, so we're going to add to the darkness, taking it to five. We didn't loiter that time, so we don't need to remove any treasure or anything like that. And we reduce the timer for Lucy down one, so now we only have three turns. So I took one damage in the refresh phase, forgot to mention because I'm poisoned. Uh, when I drew my new cards, I got bloodletting, so I'll probably get rid of that. I got a bunch of other cards, but I don't necessarily want to do uh, a lot. Bloodletting is an action, and so I won't be able to do any more actions. And I have a couple interrupts in my hand, uh, Fool's Gambit, and I'll take that. That if I need to, I can, I can, I can take off because we know we're going to activate them. So I'm going to go ahead and use bloodletting and get rid of my my poison, and then I'm going to move away. One, two. All right, and since we haven't done any AP yet, I'm actually going to place another ongoing card. So Hero's Edge, uh, it's a buff token. For now, I'm going to put it on me for this hero cycle. And then I'm going to draw a little bit of this uh, threat from the monsters. I'm going to move up one. I'm going to play Blink as a reaction. So I'll move one, two, three. Getting me a little bit closer to Lucy, plus uh, invoking the rage of these crawlers, right. which is one AP, and we'll be activating the darkness. So they activate, but this is what we've done, and, and, and this is kind of the, the the tactics of the game. I take, I, I, I scoot away. I'm still going to incur the wrath of the grubbers because I have a higher threat than Kenny. However. The crawlers, their first thing is proximity, so they're not going to try to attack me. They're going to attack him, his apprentice. And so he's basically saved me from a lot of attacks. Uh, once again, instinct goes first, so these guys are going to back up. And since they have range three, they're going to back up to full range to attack. This guy's going to turn around and attack Kenny. These grubbers are going to one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that guy stays with me. Right. Here's the four dice. You can roll the crawler's attack on me this time. Oh. I have uh, or the elements so I can absorb one of them. One, three, eight, six, so I absorb the hit. Absorbs the hit. Doesn't have to roll for poison, doesn't take any damage. The grubber attacks you. Yeah! Oh, he kills the brigand and one grubber. <laughs> That's surprising. <laughs> Misses. Good. So we took no damage that time for a change. Trying to keep the dice in the camera frame. Hard to do. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I get three attacks. You have to roll my three attacks. It's true. Well, we also need yeah, to draw a darkness yeah, that's card. That's true. So the darkness card this time was if there are more than six minions spawn a captain. There's nothing from them to spawn from, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, threat penalty, no one's threat 10, and we've activated the monsters in order, and right. once again, no lair, so there is no possibility of spawn. When you, when you see the capital word, capital S word spawn, that means they're coming from the lair. If it says a creature appears, I mean the creature just is coming and you don't need a lair to put it out there on the board. So Here's your three attacks. I got two hits. I'm just good at rolling the enemy. So I will dodge one. I'll take that. One incoming attack is parried. I will take one damage and I will use my Fool's Gambit card, which is another interrupt, which allows me to counterattack a successful enemy melee attack. And so I'll get my dice. Poor Lucy. So you only needed a five to hit. So I did. Yep. I'll go ahead and kill this guy. Increases my threat one. You're just very threatening. I am very threatening. I'm done. Yeah, the darkness cycle is over with, and I can't even play any more cards, and you can't and play can, any. No. <laughs> and so we'll move. Even though we go back into the hero cycle, there's nothing else we're gonna do. His cards are full, and my cards are basically full. So we're gonna just we're going to lower our threat if we can. I can because I have one open space. I can't. 
And then we keep a card. I'm going to keep Unravel because I want to pick up treasure and get double. I won't take damage in the refresh phase because I'm not poisoned. Build our hand size back up. I'm not keeping any cards. So we're done with our hero refresh phase. We come back to the darkness board. Um, there, there are still two monster types out that are active, so we're going to gain two AP. The timer goes down one, which means we only have two more turns to save Lucy, but the apprentice is close. We didn't incur loitering penalty, and we can still spawn, uh, pop, at least two of those three treasures. And we have two treasures on the board that we have to grab, or they turn into gold. Uh, and then that darkness, uh, that refresh phase is done. There are no status effects, the quest results we did, we did the cleanup, there's no traps, so then we move on to the next hero cycle.